from two and gather the type you is something to kill you. Panda gives you stick, mate. Is that surf out there bitching or what? Yeah, mate, takes him back to Bells Beach 93, Scrody. That was a totally awesome show. Yeah. <laughs> Big left panda. Yeah, unbelievable, mate. Mate, I'm going up the shops for some fish and chips. Wanna come? Uh, no, I'll just wait here for Cheryl. Give her a pass for me. Sweetie, you know, I just thought of something. What, sweetie? We're boring. I mean, look at us, you know, we've got a, a nice apartment, we've got nice jobs, nice money, uh, we've got nice friends, a nice baby, a nice dog with nice fleas, we've got a nice doorman, we have nice sex, uh, I have nice farts. You do, Paul, you do have nice farts. They smell like, hmm, cinnamon bagels. Well, I'm not, not supposed to smell like that. Oh, but honey, it's the only thing we do together. You see, you see, we're nice, but we're boring. Hey, hold up, I'm not boring, Paul. What do you mean, sweetie? In Twister, I fought off bad guys in tornadoes. <laughs> uh, tornado schmornado. Hey, hey, I wasn't as good as it gets. I won an Oscar, Paul. Uh, Oscar schmaska. Hey, I kissed Jack Nicholson. Ooh, Nicholson schmickelson. <laughs> That wasn't boring, that was disgusting. <laughs> Cousin Ira, am I that boring? Paulie, you're as boring as batshit. What is this batshit? Why is batshit boring? It's shit from bats. <laughs> now, bats aren't boring. Sheep, on the other hand, are boring. But no one talks about boring as sheep shit, do they? <laughs> Shut up. My God, Paul, you are so boring. <laughs> you see, you even bored the baby. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam Spencer. You know, I'm so cool. I sleep in a fridge and set the thermostat to cool. And you know something? When you shut the door, that little light really does go off. Now well, that's really cool. Great cries, foul says saffron's trash. Troy, Dan and Horse, they have a patch. Ten signs, good news week for lots of cash in TV week. Logie's time, boy, Denton's quick. Yanks and a friend, yet another dick. Our house is chill, shit's a brick in TV week. Big Bird's head is 12 feet wide. Ian Carpenter gets pie-eyed. Sam's new show is crucified. It's so piss week. It's TV week. Peter. Ian, there's my form. And here is Steve-A's form. You can't put a form in for your friend. So I suppose Julie's form is way out of the question. Well, these people have to put their own forms in. They can't. Why not? They're at work. Then they can't hand in these forms. I oh, know, that's why I'm handing them in. You can't hand them in. Well, if I don't hand them in, who's going to hand them in? The people whose forms they are. Yeah, but if these people have to take time off work to come in to hand in the forms, they're going to get the sack. Yeah? Hey. Then they're going to be unemployed. Ooh. Then they're going to have to come in here all the time. Exactly. That's what Social Security is for. We give money to people who are unemployed to live. Hey, people with jobs have to live too. Stop mucking around. Why have you really brought these forms in? Yeah, they're sick. Really? What's wrong with them? Oh. Is it bad? No, I was just trying to think what to say. Are you making this up? Hey, come on, fair go, Ian. I spend all day making stuff up. There's me doll, doll diary, phone calls to be case manager. <laughs> Phone calls to me, Mum. It's bloody exhausting. Look, look, oh, OK, I understand. Just calm down, you know? You try and look after a mate. I understand that sort of thing. I've got mates too. Yeah? In the future, can you let Stephen and Julie know that they've got to bring in their own forms, all right? Yeah, no worries, mate. Uh, don't you live in a one-bedroom flat by yourself? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Then how come Stephen and Julie have the same address as you do? Well, I don't know. Why don't you ask them? Because <laughs> they're not here. It's because they're sick. Oh. At your place, huh? All right, look, I'll go and get him. 
but it might take me a while. They're pretty sick. <laughs> so I'll see you soon then, Peter. Yeah, no worries, eh? G'day, Steve. Oh, how you going, mate? <laughs> I'm sorry, Julie. Yeah, see you next quarter. <laughs> Ah, hello, Bert. G'day, Bert. How have you been? Oh, good, mate. Good. That's good. A uh, glass of Chardonnay? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll try anything once. And what are we having done today? Oh, just the usual trim, thanks, mate. No worries. Ooh. Nice. You've, uh, you've made a few changes, Bert. Changes. Mm, yeah, the wine, the music, your clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a business consultant in. He's turned the place upside down with all his new ideas. I'm not too sure about them personally, but he says they're essential if the business is going to survive. You've come out, haven't you? I have come out, yes. <laughs> Get it a Cape York. Just watch his step. <laughs> Mommy loves you very much. More than Daddy. More than Murray. Even more than the baby. <laughs> honey, sweetie, honey, sweetie, honey, sweetie, honey. Paulie, the neighbours think you're boring. Neighbours schmeebers. I mean, what is it with neighbours anyway? I mean, they live next door to you, but you never really get to know them. I mean, what, what's going on there? Oh, saved by the bell. Ew, like, um, like, oh, hi? Oh, oh, honey, honey, sweetie, sweetie, uh, it's, it's the waitress from the restaurant, you know, the one who uh, went on and did really big things in Friends. Ew, I brought your dog back. Now, she's funny and attractive. Bitch! <laughs> honey, sweetie, honey, sweetie, we've got to have a moment, honey, sweetie. She's very famous. She could be good for your career. Okay. <laughs> Hi! Please come in. Welcome to our home. <laughs> oh, like, um, yeah, sure. Like, okay, whatever. Um, here's your dog. So how's Murray? Um, he's stuffed. <laughs> so, Murray, come to Papa. Come on, Murray. Come over here, you. You can't come over here, you. see, Paul, even boring Murray. Use your eyes, you're a good boxer. Use your money. Use your eyes, use your eyes. Guard up, all right. Guard up. Use your feet. All right. All right. You feel all right? Oh, 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 Palmenter. And welcome to Consuming Passions. Marvellous. Let's have a little drink here to celebrate yet another splendid episode of my show. <laughs> mm. 
Now, today I was planning to make a beautiful roast rack of lamb, seasoned with rosemary and garlic and served with sweet, sweated onions, mashed potato and grain mustard, topped off with a delicious kumquat jelly. Splendid. <laughs> But unfortunately, as you know, the ABC have only given me five minutes, so it's going to be stinking old cheese on toast again. <laughs> Whoopee! Here's the bread, here's the cheese, there's the griller. You know the drill. Stick it up your five minutes ass, auntie. <laughs> Yeah, you wanted to see me, Barry? Steve, uh, I've got some bad news. Uh, we won't be needing you to conduct your anger management course. Oh, what? <laughs> Why the hell not? Uh, um, uh, we, we just feel that... Um... Oh, don't give me that, you little freak. Give me the real reason. Well, we just thought it'd be best if you focused on your uh, taking responsibility for your own life seminars. Oh, bullshit! Um, there's also the issue of your maximising personal efficiency unit. I don't teach a maximising personal efficiency unit. Yes, you do, on Thursdays. No, Thursdays I teach effective time management. No, that's Tuesdays. Remember you swapped with Cindy for her memory booster workshops? Who the hell is Cindy? Uh, there's also the issue of your uh, building self-esteem unit. Oh, great! <laughs> I mean, that's it, isn't it? Game, set and match. Game over. Apart from anger management, that was my favourite course. I mean, all I've got left is my quit-for-life sessions. I might as well chuck in this profession and go back to professional dance. <laughs> in a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know how? Oh, piss off, idiot. I'm waiting for some chick, something you know nothing about. Oh, crap, I know heap about chicks. We had a pet chicken class called Barry and I sat on him and he died. No, oh, not chickens, you dog. Girl. No way. My mum reckons I'm a chick maggot. <laughs> no, 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 you dog bone, it's chick magnet. No, definitely maggot. Whatever it is, just piss off, cos I'm waiting for the hot chicks. What are you gonna do when the hot chicks get here? I am gonna passion. Yeah, passion. Yeah, passion. Yeah, passion. Yeah, passion. yeah go the patch. Yeah, go the patch. Yeah, patch you up. Patch and free. No, no. Anyway, when I finish patching him, I'm gonna have a cigarette and I'm gonna call them moles. Yeah, <laughs> treat them bad and keep them fat. Yeah, cos I am a stuck. Yeah, you're a hot chick passion thug maggot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, have you, have you, have you ever, um, have you ever touched one on the... On the... <laughs> you know, on the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll touch him on the yeah, yeah. Well, well, have you ever touched? Have you ever? Have you ever touched? You know, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you ever touched him there? Have you? Have you touched? Of course, everyone's touched him there. With your, with your, with my, with my one. With my one. Touch him on my. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Me too. What are you talking about? Give me all your money, I've got a gun. Yeah, good one. I have, it's in my pocket, now give me the money. Come on, show me. You can see it! I can't, come on, take it out of your pocket. Show come on. Show the gun. Come on, good guy. Show us your gun. Show us your gun. Ooh, the handyman, eh? The handyman. Oh, scary.
From Kool and Gatter to Cape York, it's all up for grabs. <laughs> Something isn't right here. My dress is short. My shirt is one size too small. My bra is way too tight here. Though these words could not be sweeter. You don't know if you're watching video hits or Lolita. My little dress is thrilling me. Sweetie, what is it? What is it with dog hair? What is it with dog hair? It's hair on a dog. It's not, it's not on a human, it's on a dog. It's like a hair of the dog. Paul, or what's that about? Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul. I'm leaving you. What? It's over. I, I, I'm going. Hold, hold on a sec. Isn't this a comedy show? This, this is now a serious bit. And ever since I won my Oscar, I want to do more serious bits. What is it with serious bits? It can be before the funny stuff or the after the funny stuff. I don't quite understand what's... Ow! What was that? Now, now, that was a dramatic moment. It's like a serious bit, only even less funny. So you're leaving me? Uh, is there someone else? Could be. Murray! <laughs> No! Ira. Ira? You're looking to do things to me that you could never do. Like what? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm confused. Is this a serious moment, a dramatic moment? Actually, neither. It's meant to be a funny bit. Gillette presents Olympic tidbits. The history of drugs in sport is as old as time itself. <laughs> Paris 1924, and Brazilian fencer Gabriel Garcia Rainforest becomes the first ever Olympic competitor to test positive to a banned substance. Shock in Melbourne when Colombia's Manuel Matson is disqualified for using illegal substances in the men's marathon. <laughs> Tokyo 1964, and after the powerful East German women's swim team cruised to a gold in the pool, they are accused of drug use and stripped of their medals. But justice prevails after the East German coach convinces Olympic officials that his girls aren't on steroids, they're just naturally ugly. <laughs> yes, it's comforting to know that while many things change, drugs will always be a part of the Olympic tradition. Another Jeanette Olympic tidbit. Truth is, honey, we have to break up. Oh, 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 why? I mean, uh, is it because uh, you love Ira? Is it because uh, the baby's changed our lives? Is it, is it because Murray stinks? No, sweetie, you're so boring. You've bored the entire country. And consequently, we've been axed. Axed? Mm. Oh, mm. axed. Mm. It's funny how no one axes anybody. You know, you don't actually use an actual axe. It's, it's more of a phone call. I mean, why do people say you've been phoned and suddenly you've been axed? I mean, Will like... you shut up? You... <clears throat> <laughs> 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 
Honey, just turn out the lights before you leave. What is it about turning out the lights? I mean, it's kind of like turning them out, like they've been naughty or something. It's a kind of Dickensian idea. Turn them out. All right, Stan, whenever you're ready. Well, where to begin? Wherever you'd like, Stan. Right here. Uh, the year was 1898, and electricity was... Actually, Stan, could we skip forward a few years? Oh, of course. Yeah. The year was 1923, and the Charleston... Yes, look, I'm going to have to cut you off there, Stan. What? Too much information? No, no, just too boring. Oh. <laughs> there I go again, you see, that's always been my problem. Boring, old-fashioned, tiny dick. <laughs> Now, come on, come on, Stan. Let's concentrate on the positive things. We're trying to attract a lovely lady for you here. All right. <clears throat> well, the gangrene's cleared up. <laughs> and uh, I've still got my wits about me. All right, that's more like it. Who said that? <laughs> yes, now, what about a special message to a special lady out there, Stan? All right. Uh, in these, my twilight years, I look back on life. And yes, there are a number of regrets. And you'd like to share any on camera? Well, no sex, for one thing. <laughs> not a bonk, not a shag, not a leg over. Do you have any idea what it's like to go 107 years without a decent hump? Well, no, no. Look, I... all I want is half an hour on a trapeze, dressed in leather, with a kinky, big-breasted young vixen. <laughs> is that too much to ask? <laughs> oh, no, Jesus Christ. Oh. Ah, oh. oh, thank God. Enjoy your morning tea? Should we check on that toasted cheese? No! Bugger it! <laughs> It'll be exactly the same as it was last time, won't it? So what can I cook in five minutes? Well, I've actually only got three minutes left. That seems of shitting time, isn't it? <laughs> well, I know, I could cook, um, two-minute noodles. <laughs> Exquisite. Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> it's such a challenge for a chef like myself. Well, you know, here's some I prepared earlier. In the 23 hours and 55 minutes a day that I'm not on bloody television. <laughs> you know, I have so much to offer. My sauces are superb. My eggnogs, exquisite. My strawberry souffles are splendiferous. But no, what should we give Parmenter, they say? I know, let's give him five minutes. Five sinking minutes. Parmenter, five minutes. Two fat ladies, half an hour! <laughs> and they're not even Australian, of course. It's very <laughs> Give me all your money, I've got a gun. What? I've got a gun. Where? Here, now give me the money. Oh, I don't believe you. Let me see. Uh, well, uh, my name's uh, my name's Donald Glossop, uh, but uh, you can call me Don <laughs> or Donald. <laughs> Just uh, don't call me a taxi. <laughs> As you can see, I've uh, I've got a wicked sense of humour. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, what else? Um, I'm 42. <laughs> Quite the romantic. <laughs> 
Though, uh, oh, I, I don't go much for all that um, star sign uh, business, those <laughs> horoscopes. <laughs> uh, I guess you could say in that respect I'm a typical Virgo. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, gainfully employed. Uh, I work in a very, very large law firm in the city. Oh, are you a barrister or a solicitor or...? Uh, I'm the cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's tough work. It's tough work. But, uh, you know, come five o'clock Friday, <laughs> I am out of there. You know, straight home. <laughs> Leave it all behind. Completely switch off. <laughs> so, Don, how do you relax? Oh, you know, <laughs> a bit of vacuuming, <laughs> some mopping. <laughs> yeah, empty a few bins. <laughs> Saturday night, though, oh, I really let my hair down, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't get, to, I don't, uh, you know, get to bed till about uh, two, maybe three in the morning. <laughs> what with uh, hey hey, six thirty, straight into the Pretender, sometimes a late movie or the Home Shopping Network. I mean, take your pick. <laughs> so, Don, do you ever go out nightclubs, discos? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh nightclubs. <laughs> Oh, don't get me started. I am embarrassed how many I've been to. Oh, how many have you been to? None. That's why I'm embarrassed. <laughs> right, and what kind of lady are you looking for, Don? Uh, well, any. Anyone at all. Anyone breathing. <laughs> In the past, he's tried to speak English. He's tried to become a useful member of society. He tried to share a house. Well, now he's back and facing the greatest challenge of them all. Jean-Claude Van Damme is trying to sell furniture. OK, Claude, now I'm just popping out to lunch. I'm sure you'll be OK here by yourself. Claude in shop of furniture be breaking plenty much nothing. <laughs> You're a funny one, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> See you in an hour. <laughs> Hello, people, young. Maybe I'll be helping you with the seat furniture and the couch potatoing. Uh, no, we were just after some furniture. I have the chair for the bum sitting and the bed for the for the baby making and the much rootin' tootin' hootin' spankin' wankin' much loot. Come on, honey, I think these guys are fruit loot. <laughs> you left are cracking at me! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme is trying to sell furniture. Tonight on Nine, Ray Martin takes a nostalgic look at the way we used to be. That's 6.30 tonight on Our Crappy Old Footage. While at 7 o'clock, Tracy Grimshaw shows us how to be a chillaroo in Our Leftover Outback Footage We Couldn't Quite Fit Into a Current Affair. Yes, it's an all-new lineup on Nine. Hi, I'm Adam Spencer. You know, I'm so cool that I don't need to do drugs to feel good. I get off on ice hearts. Trev, mate, I just want to say thanks for being my best man. I really do appreciate it. Absolute pleasure, mate. Absolute pleasure. Uh, and I'm just thinking about the speeches. Uh, Joe's parents are a little conservative, so uh, try not to say anything too saucy about me, okay? Right. Yeah. No, that's that's fine, mate. I mean, I, I couldn't think of anything anyway. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, I you know tried to think of all the sick and twisted things we've done together over the years, and yeah, um, yeah. there weren't any. <laughs> no, apart <laughs> apart from when. <laughs> Apart from when you didn't get that uh, video back for three weeks, what was it? Uh, lethal weapon? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you're not really trying too hard. I mean, re oh, remember that time when um, remember that time when I was rooting that night nurse, and a boyfriend came back, and I had to move in and sleep with one of the patients there, and uh, they gave me that oil enema. Now that was pretty risky. Yeah, but that was me. You'd gone home by then. <laughs> What about that time we did that road trip to Tweed Heads and met those Swedish backpackers and told them we were fruit fly inspectors and that we had to do an anal cavity search to find illegal melons? Now, you can't tell me that didn't happen. 
Oh, yeah, that happened, but that was Robbo and Greg. Mate, you'd, you'd gone off to that Christian youth camp. <laughs> OK. OK, what about the time when the bad guys uh, tied that bomb to my toilet and I was sitting on it and you had to talk me off it? <laughs> no, that's, no, that's lethal weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, look, just face it, you know, you're a decent, normal bloke. Yeah, I guess so. And, hey, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Now, you go and have a dance with your lovely wife. Alright, mate. Yeah, but no, my sister got married. You ready, here, darling? So... It's the latest comedy sensation to take the box office by storm. Billy Crystal is a wisecracking smart ass. Personally, I have no problem with the family. I myself come from a family. The difference is, if someone leaves us off their Christmas card list, we don't put a contract down on their heads. And if you whack someone, you hit them on the butt. You don't shoot them in the head. Robert yes, De Niro is a tough-talking gangster. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, what my boss is trying to say here... You talking for me? Uh, Are you talking for me? Uh, you talking for me? Uh, you talking for me? Uh, and Lisa Kudrow is... Well, Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> We have to get married eventually. <laughs> there, there's no yes, problem with all of that. Uh, so you what what goes on here? Uh, yes, okay. What I have a problem. That's right. Uh, uh, Crystal, uh, De Niro, Kudrow. Uh, analyzing. All okay. doing the same uh, old uh, shit. Surely we all recognize uh, this. I'd like to introduce to you uh, detectives Harrington and Gucciarelli, oh. who will be giving us a talk on uh, ah blowing scum off the streets. <laughs> Over to you, boys. OK, thanks, Pop. OK, show of hands, kids. Uh, how many of you here have ever murdered somebody? <laughs> Nobody. That's good. Good. Gooch. Thanks, Harrow. Right, our kids, good morning to you. Now, you probably think that we go to a pretty normal school, the odd playground bashing, the occasional staff shooting. <laughs> However, we do have to maintain our guard. Now, how do we do this? We do this by remembering the following four letters and the words that correspond to those letters. OK, Harrow? Right, yeah, OK. Always report suspicious <laughs> entities. <laughs> And of course, after school hours, we have a different set of letters. Harrow. Uh, when in public. Ah, uh, yes, I think that's quite enough. <laughs> you scallywags. <laughs> what did you just say? Scallywags. It's funny. <laughs> I had a teacher once that used to call us scallywags. Did you, Danny? Hey. Hey, what's going on with you two? Shut up and sit down with the other kids, Harrington! What the hell? Now, son! <laughs> well, today, kids, we are going to teach Mr Yardley here a lesson. What? 23 years ago, sitting in the same seat as young Harrington is today... Don't pick your nose, Harrington. <laughs> Sorry, mate. ..the young kid by the name of Danny Gucciarelli, whose English paper was handed back to him 
And what mark appeared on that English paper, do you think, Mr Yardley? I've got no idea. Well, you've got no idea. Well, perhaps I can refresh your memory. An E. E. <laughs> for spelling. You bastard, Yardley. You're dead, mate. D E D. No, it's no, no. <laughs> I can't see it. <coughs> Blinded my chalk dust. Up. Quick, kids, go, go, go. I'll get you, Yardley. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Sorry, uh, don't know what came over me. Uh, coming in the classroom, he had brought back bad childhood memories that sort of freaked my brain out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. Uh, I'm fine. Okay, well. Let's head home, soldier. Okay. Good night. After you. <laughs> Back to a <your> beauty, mate! <laughs> oh, no, man. Wait, wait, please. Oh, don't give me a ticket, mate. I'm only about three minutes over. Come on. Come on, give me a break. Well? My high school. <laughs> Do I sit here or...? Yep. Just there'd be fine. <laughs> and I'll just take that. <laughs> it's like being on the tally, isn't it? <laughs> I was on the tally once on Red Faces. Oh, really? Yeah, me and Mac had this thing where we painted our faces on our asses with little moustaches. <laughs> and we wore grass skirts and hung those little ukuleles off our... You're all right, then. <laughs> What are you trying to say? I've never had any problems performing. <laughs> I'm spot on in that department. In fact, you could say I'm a performance artist. <laughs> so don't worry about that, ladies. <laughs> so, Peter, tell us, what do you do for a job? Oh, I do a bit of um, office work. Full time? No, just one day a fortnight. <laughs> but the money's really good. What sort of work do you do? Oh, mostly filling out forms. So you're unemployed, I see. Uh, so what sort of woman are you looking for? No, I'm not fat. <laughs> you know, blonde, redhead, brunette, tats, earrings, piercings, kids, dog, cat, husband, whatever. <laughs> yes, but Pete, Peter, Peter, there must be some particular characteristic you're looking for. You'd have come in handy if she could read the yellow pages and write. <laughs> but you'd have to have a job. I don't like those women who sit around all day eating chocolates and Valium and watching soapies. I can do that myself. So can you sum up for us, Peter? Yeah, I'm uh, 33. Uh, I've been unemployed for 10 years. Like a beer, and I'm looking for a woman who will go out to work every day and support me. <laughs> I haven't got a hope, have I? No. Do you reckon I could count this as a job interview? Or? <laughs> How do you feel the transplant went? The whole team here at St Dudley's are very, very happy with the results. Right, so no sign of rejection? No, not at this stage. Dr Scanlon, your team don't have a history of transplant surgery. Is this something you picked up on a recent trip to Geneva? No, actually, it's something I picked up from my recent trip to the Royal Show. Right, Jerry? Oh. <gasps> oh. oh. Can you believe it? <laughs> I am having a shocker. With, um, a minute and five seconds, no, just a minute to go. Oh, like hands through the hourglass and all that crap. <laughs> now, what can I cook in a minute? Whoops, 45 seconds. Nothing! <laughs> I can't even boil a frigging egg! <laughs> what can we do? 
We could watch my, my wine mature. <laughs> We've got only 30 seconds to go. I wonder what Jeff Jans would do in 30 seconds. Nothing! <laughs> Probably do the washing up because he's got 30 whole minutes to dice, pair, slash, saute, steam, mash, chill, chop, fry, broil, and bloody well bake, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, that's right. He's got... Oh, no, that's right. He's got a whole bloody hour now, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, splendid. And Kerry had to help him. Well, if he gave me an hour, I'd put up with her, too. <laughs> that freak has an hour, and I have five minutes! I mean, ten seconds! That sounds pretty bloody fair, don't you? <laughs> Come in, Pops. Listen here, Jancy, Patsy. <laughs> it's not the size of the show that counts, it's how much you drink in it. <laughs> Australian, of course. <laughs>